chicken and better consumers. I'm Patricia Bermudez Hizan and I am a longtime pod supporter and animal welfare advocate. I want to know how you guys are doing. I hope you're all safe in your homes or wherever it is that you may be. On behalf of the Philippine Animal Welfare Society, I'd like to begin by thanking all of you for spending this Saturday afternoon with us. Virtual high fives, guys. Virtual high fives for all of those who are tuned in to Zoom and on the pause in the feeds Facebook page. We at Paws are always looking for practical and sustainable ways to help our animal friends. Because Paws is very well known for helping our canine, feline, and marine friends, but we also extend a helping hand to other animals. And this is why we urge you to choose the better chicken option. Please watch this. Thank you. 
chicken option aims to adopt higher animal welfare standards in chicken farming. Pause is urging producers to improve the way they raise meat chickens, often called boiler chickens, in their farms. And this is what we shall all discover today. So check back on chicken, y'all. So to everyone who's tuned in, I encourage you to hit the fair button on your Facebook stream so that more and more people can learn about this campaign and will be enlightened on how to help boiler chickens. And of course, if you want to know more, please do the guide and encourage you to visit the better ticketoption.com and follow us on their social media to get the latest updates about this campaign. Now, since it's the weekend, we're feeling very generous, not just with the information that we will be sharing with all of you, but we'll also be giving away special treats to all of our attendees today. I cannot wait to share with you what they are. You know, we have a hundred people who will be very happy. Why? Because there's a hundred people that will be uh, fortunate enough to be part of this who are here on Zoom and will stay all the way until the end of this webinar. We'll be given a special The Better Chicken Option Umbrella. Yes, it's going to be really helpful, even in this heat, right? And even in the rainy days to come. So that's going to be really great. The Better Chicken Option Umbrella will be made available to the 100 lucky people who are there. And we will announce and show their name later on. And that's not all, ladies and gentlemen, because we have one lucky person who will stay until the end of the program. We have to make sure that they stay until the end of the program because that person can win 5,000 pesos worth of Sodexo GCs. That's right. We'll be raffling off 5,000 pesos Sodexo GC. And all you need to do to win is be present. Be present until the end of this webinar because if we draw your name and you don't respond, well, you won't be eligible to win, right? And we'll have to pick another name. So make sure you stay. And we encourage all of you, actually, to keep it locked right here in this program. Now, if you have questions for our speakers, you may type them on the comment section of the Facebook stream or on the chat box if you're here on Zoom. Now... We'll get the ball rolling in today's webinar and introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker has over 20 years of experience in animal welfare, starting out as a volunteer during the time when Cross was lobbying for the first anti-cruelty law in the Philippines back in 1997, putting up his animal shelter and spay New York Clinic in 1999, and even hosting the first Asia for Animals conference in Manila in 2001. And what a journey it has been. Now she sits in the Committee on Animal Welfare to push for the regulation of the pet breeding industry, in addition to drafting other policy initiatives to improve the welfare of farm animals and protecting wildlife. She is currently pursuing a law degree in the hope that she can improve the judicial mechanisms of the Philippines in favor of the animals. Today, she is here to talk about the importance of chicken welfare and its impact on consumers. So please, welcome the Executive Director of the Philippine Animal Welfare Society, Ms. Anna Hashem Cabrera. When you go to your favorite fast food resto, you order fried chicken and not really much thought goes into what happened to the chicken before it got to your plate. Today, we are discussing the welfare of chickens raised for food. Tatanungin natin kung check down chicken mo in terms of animal welfare. To address the elephant in the room, this is to clarify that this is an animal welfare seminar. The comments on our social media pages have revealed that people think animal welfare and animal rights are the same thing, but they are different. Animal rights is a philosophical view that animals have rights similar are the same as humans so that animals are not ours to use for any reason. They are not ours to wear. They are not ours to eat. Our topic, the better chicken option, is not an animal rights webinar at all because here we discuss how consumers of chicken can make better choices and convince companies to implement better chicken raising standards. Animal welfare recognizes that animals are used for food, clothing, 
and that there are industries built on animal use. So uh, animal welfare is focused more on improving the condition of animals in these industries. We are the Philippine Animal Welfare Society, and we are the ones who lobbied successfully for the country's first Animal Welfare Act, or Republic Act 8485. And yes, uh, this animal welfare law includes uh, rules on the way food animals are kept and with due consideration for their five freedoms. So what are the internationally recognized five freedoms? These are, and we're cho showing this in chicken artwork, freedom from hunger and thirst, freedom from discomfort, freedom from pain, injury, and disease, freedom to express normal behavior, and freedom from fear and distress. Speaking of animal welfare, we were surprised that in a study done by a research group called Good Thinking, where they asked Pinoy's which animals whose welfare they cared about the most, of course, dogs rank first, and cats were second. And we were surprised that chickens ranked a close third. The chickens we will be discussing today are broiler chickens. What are broiler chickens? These are chickens that are raised for meat. Did you know that the average Pinoy eats chicken approximately three times a week? And because of this, over 1.1 billion broilers are raised for food in the Philippines. So how are broilers raised? I think for most of us who grew up with wholesome images of farms, have this image in our head of hundreds of chickens roaming uh, free in a grassy area while the farmer comes to feed them. However, the reality is most broiler chickens are raised in CCS or climate controlled systems where there are 20,000 to 40,000 birds in a big building with nothing but plastic flooring and just containers for food and water. So 90% of broiler chickens are produced by contract growers in CCS or industrial farms. And only 10% are raised on what we imagine in our heads as free range farms. Um, this is from a study done by the UPLB Foundation. This is where the better chicken option comes in. TBCO is PAWS's first active campaign about animals raised for consumption. By identifying companies that raise chickens in better environments, TBCO will guide consumers towards choosing better chickens to buy, cook, and eat. In countries like Australia and in the UK, there are RSPCA approved chickens are chickens inspected by animal welfare groups that are raised in farms compliant with the standards of care set by these RSPCAs or welfare groups. So ngayon, wala pa tayo yan sa Pilipinas. So, pohope, TBCO is, is it. Welfare group approved chickens are more expensive because of increased production costs. But there is a market willing to pay extra because Consumers care that the chickens live a good life and were handled humanely. The good news is, Filipino consumers have expressed an interest in knowing more about how they can improve the welfare of chickens for food. We commissioned the Good Thinking Research Group to ask whether consumers are willing to spend more for humanely raised chickens or chickens that have engaged in natural behavior in their enclosures. And it showed that consumers like you who are attending this webinar are willing to spend 48% for a better chicken option. So kahit mas mahal, payag pa rin uh, sila bumili ng higher welfare chickens. So what do we ask of companies? There are actually seven standards, starting with space. The better chicken option is pushing for no cages. No multi-tiered cages, just housing systems that allow chickens to move more freely and with enrichment, packing and perching materials, which will be discussed later. The problem with raising 20,000 to 40,000 chickens in controlled climate systems is that if a typhoon, for example, causes a power outage and there are no generators or backup systems, 
Chicken die, chickens die in large numbers due to heat and suffocation, such as what happened last year in the Carlan Laguna. This is what a typical CCS housing looks like. You may Google this news article on Inquirer, and you will see that the chicken area is bare, there is plastic flooring, and there are only containers for food, no purchase, no litter. And since this farm did not have a backup system for power outages, the chickens died of heat and suffocation. The second standard is light. Uh, the better chicken option recommends 50 lux. The experts we've consulted say that light intensity is currently not being measured, although they estimate that they may maintain between 20 to 40 lux of light. Uh, proper lighting will help the chickens understand the time of day and directs their behavior. The third standard is connected to light. TBCO recommends that there should be at least six hours of night or darkness. Current industry standards only give five hours of total darkness, so I just stress the mga chickens because they will not experience some proper resting period. The fourth standard is stock rate, and it is recommended at 30 kilograms live bird per square meter of flooring. Thankfully, this is being met currently in the Philippines due to the humidity in our country. Not complying with stock rate guidelines would lead to death for the chickens. So at least this is driving compliance. The fifth standard is probably the most contentious as the breeds of chickens being supplied to contract growers, they say, are already a given. This will be discussed by the next presenter, Dr. Monica List, in greater detail. But let me just mention that current growth rate of broilers in the Philippines is at 58 to 60 grams a day. And Dr. List will explain why this results in various health problems for the chickens. You see, it takes a normal chicken 24 to 26 weeks to grow from chick to chicken. But in the broiler chicken industry, they need to produce 1.6 kilogram or 1.7 kilogram of chicken in 35 to 40 days which is the normal cycle for broiler farms. We are pushing for chickens not growing more than 50 grams a day. And hopefully with your demand, slower growing breeds will be sourced and used by the industry within the next five years. The sixth standard is litter flooring. And it really is tragic that broilers don't get, get to scratch or in Filipino, makapagkahig man lang. This is really part of nature, and it must pain the chickens to not be able to do this. We have been told by vet consultants that at least foot problems have been minimized, but this does not address um, the natural behavior uh, problem. Pagkakahig is one of the most normal things for chickens to do, and for this, they need litter. Sa Pilipinas, common advice house for litter. But contract growers and integrators say that rice hulls now are low in supply because most of our rice is already imported. But as you can see in this slide, there are other alternatives for litter. Seventh standard is enrichment. Chickens need to perch, and the better chicken option is simply asking for two wood perches, two meter simple wood perches or piraso ng kahoy and two pieces of pecking materials for every 2,000 birds. So dahil sa kawalan ng perches, broiler chickens would sometimes use their feeders as perches just to be able to experience perching. Also, as regards fast-growing breeds, even if the chickens would like to perch, they are unable to because their bodies have grown too heavy too fast. So to sum it up, these are the things that we are asking for. So what can we do as consumers? We can write to companies. On our website, we have a petition for you to sign. Ask your friends and your family to sign up. So does it matter that the chicken had a good life even if he or she will be slaughtered anyway? Yes, being able to perch, being able to pet, and being able to grow properly without any pain, these would have mean a lot to chickens. Make companies aware that there are people 
like you, who care about what happens to these animals, that there are consumers who want the better chicken option. Wow, thank you so much for that enlightening discussion, Anna. You know, it really is high time to know who check the check on chicken you and let brands and the community know that you, you yourself, you want the better chicken option. Sign the petition and inform your friends and family about your choice. And let me remind you that if you have questions for Anna, you can actually type them in the comments section of our Facebook stream or on the chat box on the screen. Now it's time to continue this afternoon of discovery as we delve deeper into chicken welfare and learn about slow growth of chicken. To talk about this is our next speaker who is a global animal welfare advisor for World Animal Protection. Her areas of expertise include animal welfare, sustainable food systems, and animal ethics. In her role at World Animal Protection, she provides support in the areas of animal welfare science, ethics, and policy. She obtained a PhD in philosophy from the Michigan State University in 2019 with specializations in animal studies and ecological food and farming systems. She also holds degrees in veterinary medicine and bioethics from the Universidad Nacional in Costa Rica. Let's give a warm welcome to the Global Animal Welfare Advisor of the World Animal Protection on Raising Better Chickens, Dr. Monica List. Good afternoon. My name is Monica List. I'm a veterinarian and animal welfare specialist, and I work as an animal welfare advisor for World Animal Protection. Today, I'm going to talk to you about slow grown chickens. First of all, uh, a bit about the origin of domestic chickens. So, where do domestic chickens come from? Domestic chickens, regardless of whether they're used for meat, such as boilers or eggs, are all descendants of the red jungle fowl. This is a wild relative of modern chickens, which originates in Southeast Asia and is still widespread throughout Southeast Asia and the Indian subcontinent. But their domestic relatives have come a long way from that. And you must think, well, if we have slow growing chickens, we must for sure have fast growing chickens, and we do. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about the history of why and how we came to have those fast growing chickens. So during World War II, throughout the world, meat as well as many other resources were rationed and this applied to the United States as well, where people relied mainly on eggs and the meat from egg laying hens for their protein needs. But once the world ended, people wanted to indulge in eating more meat and resources were no longer restricted. So poultry companies saw a great opportunity in this. However, at that time, boiler chickens looked nothing like they do today. They were quite small and looked very much like egg laying hens, weighing barely one kilogram after two months of growth. So this was not nearly enough to feed, for example, a family of four or more people. So in response, the United States Department of Agriculture, together with a supermarket chain called a &P, decided to launch a contest called the Chicken of Tomorrow, where they invited chicken producers to find a crossbreed of chicken that would be large, grow quickly, and produce more meat using less feed, in other words, more cheaply. 46 chicken breeders participated and the winning breeds became the precursors of what today are the commercial lines of fast growing boiler chickens that we know today. But as we will find out, uh, chickens were the great losers in this contest. 
Starting in the 1950s, those same companies that participated in the Chicken of Tomorrow contest began to grow and develop sophisticated breeding programs where they worked with geneticists to select chickens for certain traits that, that they saw meat yield, growth rate, uh, the size of their breast muscles, etc. And in this image, this pyramid here, you can see the structure of a typical modern broiler chicken breeding program. So if you look at the top two levels of the pyramid, the purebred or pedigree and great grandparent lines, those are owned by two large genetics companies. And so it's incredible to know this, but two companies basically throughout the world control all of the genetics for all of the broiler chickens grown on commercial farms worldwide. Then we have uh, the middle layer, so the grandparent and parent lines, those are normally owned by local companies or local uh, producers in various countries. And finally, the bottom layer, the commercial broilers, those are the chickens that are grown at very, very large scale on factory farms throughout the world and that end up in supermarkets or used in restaurants and in homes, et cetera. So over 50 years, these genetic companies have heavily selected for traits that they find uh, commercially attractive. So that includes the size and weight of chickens, uh, growth rate, improved efficiency, increased meat yield, et cetera. But this has led to many unintended and bad consequences for the chickens themselves. In the image, you can see a comparison of the size and weight of chickens at 0, 28, and 56 days. In 1957, uh, the column at the left, and then 1978, the middle column, and finally 2005, the column at the right, which uh, these look very similar to chickens that you would see today as well. So as you can tell, the differences are astounding. Growth has increased by approximately 400% in those decades. And the breast muscle of meat chickens is now about 80% larger. This is in response to market demands. Breast meat is highly valued in many markets as healthier or more attractive. And so genetics companies have focused on breeding chickens that have these larger breast muscles. This increase in, in growth rates and other traits are of course great for producers, but it's not good at all for the chickens. So because they grow so quickly, as young as three weeks old, these fast growing birds start developing very serious painful conditions due to their size and growth rate. As they get older, they will spend up to 80% of their time inactive because their legs are basically not able to hold their weight and their large breast muscles. They also commonly develop muscle and bone problems that make it even harder for them to move. And their muscle mass grows so quickly that their heart and lungs often fail to keep up and they can develop problems like ascites, which is a accumulation of fluid in the body cavity and even sudden death due to heart failure. They can also develop skin and foot conditions through the constant sitting and standing, often in their own waist, which can lead to skin burns, blisters on the breast, and lesions and infection on the feet. And remember, these are very young birds. These are birds that are, in most cases, just a little bit over one month old, and yet they are living with, with this great suffering and pain. Here in these two slides that follow are some examples of the most common birds grown at commercial scale. These are fast growing conventional birds. So this first one is the Ross 308. It's from the Avigen Company, which is one of the two large genetics companies in the world. And then this Second one is the Cobb 500, which is from the Cobb Bantress company, the second large company. So look carefully at these birds, and then I'm going to show you some slow-growing birds, and you will see that visually there is not a great difference 
but in the way uh, the bodies of these birds are built, there is a great difference to them in their welfare and the quality of their life. So in this picture, these are all slower grown chickens from a farm in the Netherlands. You will also see that they are being grown in high welfare conditions. You'll see the windows letting in natural light. You'll see that the chickens have surfaces to stand and perch on. Chickens, of course, are prey animals, so they often feel safer and more comfortable on elevated surfaces. They have a natural instinct to perch, especially solar growers, since their bodies are more balanced and less heavy, have uh, the ease of standing on perches and will seek to do that. So it's an advantage to grow them in this kind of environment. Now, as I said, there's not a great difference visually between these birds and the fast growing birds that I showed you in the previous slides. So, so what is the important difference here? Well, just as the genetics companies have selected the fast growing birds to grow large breast muscles, uh, to grow very quickly and use feed very efficiently, they have also developed these lines of slow growing birds. So these are not birds that you would find in someone's backyard. These are chickens that are also developed by the big genetics companies, except these chickens have been selected to grow a bit slower, uh, to grow a bit leaner, have stronger legs, and other characteristics that in general make their lives better. Now, the genetics companies make these breeds available to local markets depending on demand. So in the Netherlands, for example, where this picture that I'm showing you is from, all of the chicken raised for local consumption and sold at supermarkets currently comes from slow growing birds. And this is because consumers in the Netherlands have um, become educated about the pain and suffering of fast growing birds and they have demanded from their local supermarkets, retailers, restaurants, that they want slow growing birds to be used. So this is why the genetics companies make those birds available in those markets. On these next slides are some examples of slow growing breeds developed and produced by those major breeding companies that I've mentioned, Aviagen and Cobb. And again, you'll see that they don't look very different from the fast growing birds, but they do have a more balanced skeletal development and function. And so they're better able to carry their body weight. And this allows them to perform well in indoor conditions, as you see in the top picture. So this is a very you know, common, conventional indoor farm, large scale farm. These slow growing chickens can have good lives in those conditions. They can also be grown in high welfare conditions outdoors, as you see at the bottom here. Slow growing breeds also have other positive traits like healthier skin. They generally present reduced rates of lesions to the feet that we talked about. It's very common for chickens to develop lesions on the feet when they're standing constantly or walking constantly in, um, in litter that has been soiled. And so these slow growing breeds have an advantage with having stronger skin as well. Importantly, because of their healthier growth rate and stronger legs, these slower growing chickens are better able to support their weight and in general are more active. So if you remember, I mentioned that fast growing breeds can spend up to 80% of their time or more just sitting, sleeping, or standing because they're too heavy to walk. Um, the slower growing breeds uh, have stronger legs and a more balanced body and so are able to be more active in general and use the enrichments such as those that we saw in the picture from the birds in the Netherlands. I thank you very much for your attention and your time and I'm happy to take questions at this point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Monica Lewis. Slow is indeed the way to go if we want 
the better chicken option. And Dr. Lish shared that invitation to ask the questions. If you do have any questions for Dr. Lish, you may type them on the comment section of our Facebook stream or on the chat box on Zoom. She'll be answering some of them during our Q&A session later on. Right now, it is time to welcome our special guest this afternoon. He is a very popular TV host and a certified animal lover who will be sharing some interesting trivia about our feathered friends. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kuya Kim Atienza. Hi, everyone. I hope marami kayo natutunan mula sa mga presentations ni Ana Cabrera ng POS at Dr. Monica List of the World Animal Protection on Raising Better Chickens. Nandito naman ako ngayon upang makabahagi ng kaunting kalaman tukol sa mga manok at kung bakit mahalaga na supportahan nyo ang The Better Chicken Option. Alam niyo ba na may motherly instinct sa mga manok? Mother hens talk to their chicks even before they hatch. At ang nakakatuwa, sumasagot ang mga inahin parang yung mga nanay na kinakausap ang kanilang mga anak sa sinapupunan. Kaya naman, mother hens ang tawag sa kanila. Hindi lang yan, ha? Alam niyo ba na chicken na chicken lang sa mga chickens ang pag-solve ng complex problems dahil sila ay matatalinong hayop. Sa katunayan, ang mga inahin na as young as two days old already show object permanence. An understanding that when an object is not seen, it still exists. Hindi lang pala sila puro tuka. May bumubo rin pagdating sa kanilang mga tuktok. Chickens also need proper care for their mental well-being. Parang tao rin. Kaya makakabuting bigyan sila ng mga items tulad ng box of hay or a head of cabbage to peck upang ma-encourage sa kanilang foraging behavior which in turn enriches their day-to-day -day routine. O ba? Diba? Mapamano ka man o tao, you have to take care of your mental health. Parte rin ng pag-alaga sa kanilang mental well-being ang pagkakaroon ng mga kaibigan because chickens are highly social animals. Importante sa kanila mga katropa at pamilya kaya naman enjoy sila pag hindi sila nag-iisa. The more the merrier and the merrier ika nga. Alam niyo rin ba na gusto ng mga manok na ubangat sila sa buhay? And that's because they love that purchase. Para nila ito para protektahan ang mga sarili nila mula sa parasite sa lupa. Plus, the purchase also give them a sense of safety and security. Iangat para mag-ingat. Pero hindi lang yan ang paraan para maiwasan nila ang parasites. May kakaiba rin paraan ng pagligo ang mga chicken. Hindi sila gumagamit ng tubig. At lalo hindi sila gumagamit ng sabon. In fact, they like to roll around in the ground to keep their feathers in good condition. As well as to stay free from mites, lice, and other parasites. To stay clean, they gotta get dirty. Kakaiba, di ba? Chickens also need a well-balanced diet. For chickens to be healthy and happy, you have to give them good quality food to provide them the necessary nutrition and energy. Kailangan nila ang energy na yan because they love to walk around and interact with the world around them. Mahilig silang mamasyal at very curious din sila sa kanilang kapaligiran. At dahil mahilig silang maglamyerda at gumimi kasamang kanilang mga katropa. Importante na makakuha sila ng sapat na pahinga. Alam niyo ba na chickens naturally sleep whenever it gets dark and they awaken as soon as the sun rises? Kaya naman ang hilig nilang mag-good morning sa umaga sa pamamagitan ng pagpilaok. Ilan lang ito sa mga nakakatuwang trivia tukol sa mga manok. It only goes to show na dapat tulungan nating maging okay ang buhay nila dahil kung check na check ang kanilang welfare, ang chickens may joy. At this point, gusto ko kayong pakilala sa anak ko, si Eliana. Itong anak ko napamahal na sa mga manok. Kahit siya mga two na burrowlet chickens namin dito sa bahay. At tatanungin natin, Hi, Eliana! Hello! <laughs> yeah. So tell us more about these uh, two na burrowlet chickens that are pets of yours. Well, um, we got them when we were looking to car tomorrow for pet supplies. Mm. And we found two that were being sold mm. as feeders. Mm -hmm. But um, in the end, we decided to adopt two as our family pets until mm. we brought them home and we raised them here since then. Mm. Oh, what, what joy do these chickens give you, Eliana? Well, I think it's very, very rewarding to have them here. When we first got them, they were pale, they had, they were missing feathers in a lot of places, and they could, they weren't good at, their legs were really, really weak, and they had trouble walking. But they still managed to do so many things that warm my heart. They love to 
roll around in the dirt to clean themselves. They mm -hmm. like to sunbathe when it's hot outside. They. So you were saying about rolling in the dirt, Elian? Yeah. Um, when my chickens are like feeling dirty, whenever there's like loose dirt or sand that's lying around, they'll go to it. They'll dig with their feet and then they'll just roll around in it to mm -hmm. clean up. Do you think that this dirt is good for them? Yeah, they really, really enjoy it, and then they fall asleep after, so it's really cute to watch them do it. Do you think these chickens need to pitch? I think they do. They love, to, well, my broilers, because they're very, very big, especially for their size, they can't really fly that well, so they perch as close to the ground as possible, but they do like to perch on something mm -hmm. instead of just the floor. Our chickens are very social. Uh, you think, do you think the chickens are happy and win? No, I, my chickens, so we have eight at the house, mm -hmm. right? And they're all of different types, they're different breeds. Mm -hmm. But even, even them, they, they mingle as a group. So basically they love to socialize with one another. They love to chat. I don't know, I hear them um, chirping amongst each other all the time. And I think it's really, really cool to watch that. We eat chicken. Are we supposed to be kind to the chickens we're going to eat anyway? Well, of course, there's nothing wrong with eating chickens, but I think we should advocate for a more humane way of treating the chickens that we're going to be eating. Napakatalino talaga ng anak ko. Talagang ang galing-galing yan. So proud of her. Manang-mana sa nanay niya. Nakita niya naman tropang-tropa sila. Kaya naman, it's time that we extend our helping hand to help more friends. Let's make the move to help make our community and brands aware of our choice. Simply sign up for a petition that helps spread the word. Tandaan. Chicken na chicken na lang para makatulong na maging check na check ang chicken. Ito po si Kuya Kim at ang aking anak na si Eliana nagsasabing Choose the better chicken option. and his lovely daughter Eliana for all this interesting information and anecdotes about broiler chickens. So, alam niyo ba that aside from the rescue chickens, Eliana also rescues dogs. Last April, she rescued Wonder, a dog hit by a tricycle in Makati, and she brought Wonder home and nursed her back to health. O oh, diba? Napaka-wonderful talaga si Eliana and also so wonderful that we're able to see the photos and really get to be more intimate with that story. So wow, you must be so proud to hear Kim, but we'll get to know more about that later on because this is going to be a wonderful afternoon and learning of learning. And of course, one of the best ways to wonderfully learn is to ask. We have been gathering all the questions you have sent in, but if you have more questions, you can type them on the comment box section of our Facebook stream or on the chat box here on Zoom. And just a little reminder, everyone, those of you who will stay until the end of the webinar will get a chance to win 5,000 pesos. So, so make sure you stay until the very last part of this program. Our speakers, I see them, are ready, so I'd like to welcome them back. The Executive Director of the Philippine Animal Welfare Society, I'd like to call up Ms. Ana Cabrera. I'd like to also call up the Global Animal Welfare Advisor of the World Animal Protection on Raising Better Chickens, Dr. Monica Liss, and TV host and animal advocate, Kuya Kim Atienza. Hello to the three of you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Kuya Kim, what a great... Um, I'd like to tell you first... Uh -huh. Yeah. I have no video on that. The signal here in the province, I'm out in the province, and the signal is so bad. But I can hear you, but I can't see you. Huh? So just in case I would go back, I would have error, as I can't see anything. But I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to um, be part of this campaign with the guard. And this is the very reason why we want to ask you, Kuyi Ken, the first question. Ito yung tanong sa'yo, mas masaya ba na mag-alaga ng aso o ng manok? Um, when I was a boy, I took care of uh, chicks, but they never grew to be chickens. Oh, so that, this love for chickens uh, gives me like various, you know, various uh, happiness. It gives me happiness because I can see the way 
and children are so important, especially Ayana. Um, she, she even built a little chicken coop for the chicken, so so happy. Um, I think that's what I was I have a lot, we have a lot of dogs also. The dogs used to be uh, purebred dogs, but now uh, they've uh, they become aspins, uh, rescued aspins, care of my daughters, who love them. And um, if you ask me if it's a uh, special magalaga ng ano, kasi sa aso, I can't tell it's so, it, uh, apples and oranges. Basta talaga ng animals, not sila, basta talaga. That kind of stuff talaga. But you really can't compare the joy that a dog gives and the uh, happiness and the relaxation watching uh, Eliana's chickens walking around our garden gives me as well. Thanks so much for that. You know, that really is a really big eye opener for a lot of people. But I want to go first to Anna for the next question because I really want to know about that sign up and, and are there brands already that already signed up? Oh, well, this is very weird, actually. We've sent out letters, and ang magandang balita, the, this company, I think I'm allowed naman to mention them sa media, Magdolia, they're very open. No? They haven't signed up yet, but they have really, um, you know, come through and saying now we're willing to sit and listen, because they're also very much into animal welfare. So I think it's a very optimistic or a, it's, it's a good sign that they will be on board soon. And they, they have uh, expressed willingness to sit down. And in fact, we are in the Committee on Animal Welfare. Right now, there's a discussion on the minimum standards, welfare standards of poultry. And they're there in the discussions. So they also want to make things better. And uh, so it, it's a good sign. So no sign up sufficient yet. But we're hoping that in the next few months, we'll have more companies signing on. And having those discussions really are that necessary and good step towards that, right? Addressing this. Now, I wanted to address Dr. Monica. Hi, Doc Monica. You know, you talked about slow-growing breeds. Uh, these slow-growing breeds of chicken that you mentioned, do they, do they taste different? Uh, what about the nutritional value? I'm very curious. Yes, uh, thank you for, for your question. Um, and thank you for having me. So remember that these chickens, these silver chickens, uh, because their bodies are uh, better balanced, they are a lot more active. And so this does have an effect on the quality of their meat. Um, the meat tends to have more lean muscle and less fat. So there is a difference in taste and there's also a difference in nutritional value. They tend to be leaner birds and many people actually prefer these so growing breeds because of their taste. Thanks so much for making that quite clear. Maybe I'll just go to you again for the second question because I think it's it's really related. Um, so for my second question to you, Dr. List, are the slow growing more expensive than the fast growing ones? The chickens themselves are not more expensive, but they are more expensive to raise because remember that since they grow slower, we have to feed them for an extended period of time. So whereas a fast growing chicken is done growing or ready for the market at approximately 35 to 40 days of age, a slow growing chicken might grow 54 to 56 days and even a little more depending on the breed. So, of course, they eat more feed during that time. So for the producer, uh, there is a small increase in expense. We've done some studies um, that have shown us that uh, in some markets, the increase in cost for producers can be six to nine cents. Uh, these are euro cents per kilogram of meat produced. And of course, this translates to an additional cost to consumers as well. But uh, we think it's very much worth it for the improvements in welfare that we see in these chickens, making their lives much better. Thanks, you know, it's just a wealth of information that we're getting from you, Dr. Monica, and it's so wonderful to have uh, you on the panel to be able to give a lot of clarity on a lot of questions that are brewing. And one of the questions here that now I will ask, Kuya Kim, if you're still there, yeah. 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 chicken. Um, actually, I, I, I do eat chicken. I think that uh, eating chicken is one of the healthiest things you can do instead of eating red meat. I, um, 
we don't have to stop eating chicken to get into this campaign. Um, people will ask, why do you have to get into this, uh, this, this campaign of keeping chickens a certain way? They're going to eat them anyway, they're going to die anyway. But uh, um, what, what was stopping us also from being humane before we eat them? No? Um, they will uh, they always say uh, the cycle of nature is that way, so I don't know if we eat them. But we are humans, that's why we are to be humane. We are to be as kind as we can uh, before the future date that they have to be um, uh, slaughtered. No? Um, it, it's just the, the, the more human thing to do, to be humane, be kind to these animals. Uh, when we can. Um, we are not against uh, the chicken industry suffering uh, so much now because of the pandemic. We'd like to work with them. We'd like to uh, um, just work with them, hand in hand. We're not uh, empathy, we're not fighting anyone. We're just requesting and uh, suggesting uh, certain ways for the, the animals to be handled uh, with kindness, with willingness, uh, with humanity. Actually, I really like that answer because I saw that there was a question also kung ano ba yung relevance ng better chicken option kung kinakain din sila and that, that really gives a lot of clarity also to that issue. Now, I'm gonna go to Anna for this one. Some people are asking na ano yung difference ng chickens as pets katulad ng ginagawa ni Kuya and chickens for food. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. And actually, as animals, there's no difference now. So the chickens that you keep as pets, the chickens that we eat as food, um, the dogs, the cats, and us, no, we're animals. So bio if biologically yung question, then there is no difference. Now, how come this uh, setup came in that some animals are domesticated, some animals we produce for food? I think it goes back, and, and Monica touched on this in her presentation. Uh, long, long time ago, I think people started hunting an, you know, animals for food, and they figured out, oh, let's not go out and hunt. We can just keep some of them and raise them here. And some of them are chickens, cows, pigs. So they started raising them for their meat. And they also found that certain animals were loyal. So may mga dogs, you know, coming up and with all these services and our affinity for them. So they started being pets. And, and the problem started coming in when industrialization came in. So um, in, in large amounts. Now. So now we just don't grow chickens in our back backyard. We have chickens now in um, factories and big buildings there's 20,000 chickens at the time or 40,000 so um it, it goes back to the, like animal welfare and animal rights so questions like um now we have industries built on the use of these animals and they are chickens uh, and uh, we just uh, i pointed out in my presentation that Pinoy's consume 1.1 billion chickens a year no so uh given that number i think we have to seriously consider now, there are things that we can do better. And that's why there is the better chicken option. Obviously, there's the best option, just not to eat chicken. But if, if there is an industry built on this, and there's 1.1 billion consumers, we certainly do better for the chickens. And that's what ch better chicken option is all about. Thanks so much, Anna. I jump to Dr. Monica here. Here's a question from our live stream. How do we know the chicken? That is a great question. And in many markets where these breeds already exist and are already in supermarkets and different types of retail outlets, uh, there are labeling and certification systems. So this is one of the things that we would hope would develop in parallel with the demand is a labeling system, a clear system that will allow consumers to very quickly know if they are purchasing a higher welfare option. Thanks, Dr. Liz. Anna, here in the Philippines, what companies provide better chickens to our consumers? And again, this is, um, you know, this is something that's being asked of us on our we appreciate all of you for throwing us the questions as we ask again to Anna. You know, you talked about some companies uh, that provide better chicken options and are open to that conversation already. Can you tell us more? Um, okay, since we've just started this conversation with the companies that provide chicken, their eyes have been opened that there are slow growing chickens for that because they're, before they didn't really talk, think that this would matter. 
the slow growing and things. And now we know that consumers are also concerned. And now if you sign the petition, the more that they will be aware that you are also concerned about it. And I, I believe that they will be uh, uh, companies signing on. But right now, um, no official signups yet. And this is our big launch, uh, thanks to, to Dr. Monica, to Kim especially for making raising the awareness. And I think after this seminar, this webinar, we would have more signups and we would do um, something really groundbreaking because in other advanced countries, they have certification systems for uh, humanely raised animals and we hope to have it here. So yes, um, things are looking good and we are um, getting uh, standards that uh, maybe the companies would like to uh, get slower growing breeds, uh, provide purchase, provide litter, and that's happening soon. I can feel it. And um, so we need your help signing the petition. Thanks so much. I know Kuya Kim is still here and really you being an influential personality, you get to really uh, share the information for people to have that better chicken option. But I'm so inspired but by what you've done with your daughter. Can you just share a little bit more about how important it is to really teach also not just our generation on these types of better choices, better chicken option, for example? <laughs> Um, but it, it's, it's good that you teach kids early on because the, the habits uh, that they learn at the stage they carry on in the later part of their life. No? Unlike uh, adults who have vested interests already and set habits. But how do we reach the young? In my kids have no problem because it's, it's very ingrained in them because they started very early loving animals. But the best way to reach uh, their generation is via social media. These, these kids are digital natives. They will not understand. Uh, it has to be said also in a language that they understand. Uh, again, via social media. It's, it's, it's a very special language. It has to be learned by us, by middle aged people. No? But uh, the way to reach them really is social media Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, but it has to, they have to be taught early. Um, like like my, as my kids are a perfect example of a. Of a uh, I, I don't have to teach them anymore. It, they're uh, they're um, not naturally kind, and they're naturally uh, humane, and they're, they're going to be growing up as a, a kinder uh, human beings. Because they learn early on. Thank you so much for that. You know, they say that really modeling is the best teacher, and you've been such a great model to your children. And I hope uh, us parents, Friends will also pick up that. We really appreciate that. Maybe we're down to our last couple of questions. Um, uh, before we go to the uh, final messages, there's one question here, and I think it's interesting for uh, Anna to answer this question. Um, it's about welfare during slaughter. What about it? How do you ensure that? Um, there is a law, the Animal Welfare Act, and we're familiar with the Animal Welfare Act only for dogs and cats because that's what gets airtime in media. But actually, the Animal Welfare Act is all-encompassing. It, it involves all animals, including food animals. So when it got passed in 1998, the Committee on Animal Welfare was um, established. And PAWS is an institutional member of the Committee on Animal Welfare. We drew up rules on guidelines on humane slaughter. There used to be none. Um, but we put guidelines like how to usher the, the pigs in, into like boxes where they can, you know, they can get hurt if, if they're just running around and you're running after them. So um, very specific detailed things uh, that we sat down with the industry and talked with them. And that's, this is the same consultative meeting that we're uh, joining for the chickens so that they can get better options like the purchase, the litter and the uh, slow growing breeds. So it is part of our law. It's just not very um, out there in terms of media. And I don't think none of the farmers have actually been sued for animal welfare violations yet because animal welfare groups have chosen to just um, maybe um, work with them so that they know um, they're educated on the practices. And we found that this method was much more effective in terms of lobbying. 
Well, thank you so much, Anna, Dr. Monica, and Kuya Kim for graciously answering our viewers' questions. But of course, before we let you guys go, we'd like to hear uh, from the three of you for your final thoughts, starting with Dr. Monica. Yes, thank you, Patricia. Uh, well, I think that the takeaway message for me is that this is a great campaign, uh, the Better Chicken Option, because it is the change is ultimately in the hands of consumers. And as you can see, there are very small changes we can make that would be very, very important for chickens. So uh, consumer signing up to this is really the first step to creating change. Thank you so much. Yes, they, they are important factors in creating that change. We appreciate your thoughts. Now we go to Anna. Any last words for our viewers? Oh, well, uh, for us Filipinos, usually we we fail to grasp the concept that if kapatayin then, then would it really matter? And we have to insist as animal welfare that it does matter how the chicken lived, how it died, and how they are raised, their husbandry, all these things go into uh, welfare considerations. And as a humane society, then we should look into that. And Monica is right. It's consumers that are pivotal to this whole thing about change. And you can start by signing the, the petition on our website. Uh, it's on www.pos.org.ph. We actually have also a website up for the better chicken option. So if they can do that, and then we could put out also the addresses and you can write the companies as well. So we're very hopeful, we're very optimistic, and that there will be better chicken options because there are a lot of animal lovers also um, tuned in right now. And speaking of animal lovers, we give the floor to Kuya Kim for your last and final words. Um, I'd like to thank uh, for giving me this opportunity, me and my daughter, Eliana, for giving us the opportunity to be able to be part of this campaign. This is a big thing for me and my kids. So close to us, we all have to be able to help us. We all have to be able to help us. This is what we have to do with our children, to be able to help us. Uh, itong itong kabaitan na tututunan nila sa pag-aalaga ng tayo, sa pagiging humane, madadala nila kung sila'y matanda na. When they're older, any kind of human beings, much better than the generation or the generation ahead of us, the better ahead. So, um, to me, to me, there's a lot of work to be done, and I'm so happy to be part of this work. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Foss. Thank uh, you, Kim. Ito. It's we just yes. it. Thank you. Ang ganda niyan. Umpisa pa lang to. Yes, we had just started. And a big round of applause for our speakers, Anna Cabrera, of course, Dr. Monica Liss of the World Animal Protection on Raising Better Chickens, and of course, Kula Kim Atienza. Thank you to the three of you. We really appreciate it. Well, this has been an eye-opener, an eye-opening experience for me, and I'm sure for all of you as well. I hope that their messages and the answers to those questions help you make a better choice in choosing the better chicken option. Now, before we raffle off our major prize for the day, I'd like to first thank our first 100 registrants who logged in and finished the webinar. Thank you so much. And as a token of our gratitude, you will receive a special better chicken option umbrella, like I said earlier. And here are now the lucky 100. Can we please flash him? For you to get that better chicken option. If you need to work on the screen, well, congratulations to all of the winners. All hundred of you, our staff, will be in touch with you to tell you how you can claim your prize as we continue to flash the names of our 100 winners for the Better Chicken Option umbrella. Did you guys learn a lot? I sure did. And I honestly will have to uh, really make sure that to check Korea and kung check ba ang chicken ko, di ba? I think that's going to be one of the main messages that hopefully you guys will be able to share to others as well. Again, congratulations.
the 100 winners of the um, uh, the better chicken option umbrellas. And now it's time for our special raffle, where one of you, one of you will win a 5,000 peso so Dexo gift certificate. And like I said at the start of the program, chicken to chicken, yum. I'm a mechanic snack, and all you need to do to win is just to be physically present. Okay, so this is how it's going to go. Once you hear your name, and we'll be announcing your name, I'll be sharing your name. Once you hear your name, you have to raise your hand on Zoom. You have that function on Zoom to be able to raise hand, right? Or if you're on Facebook, you can comment on your Facebook and say, I'm here, so that we know and you can be acknowledged that you indeed are there. Got it? So you need to let us know that you are here once your name is called because you only have 10 short seconds to respond. 10 seconds. If you don't respond, we're going to have to move on to the next name. Okay ba? Madali lang, di ba? So, good luck to everyone. And of course, let's all manifest all that great energy so that you will win. We have our electronic raffle that we will be flashing on the board. And via that electronic raffle, you guys will see who will be the winner. Of course, we've loaded everybody's names there, so don't worry about it. And once we hit that raffle button, we will eventually find out who the winner is. Let's go in three, two, one. And you can see with a randomizer, it's randomly picking names. And we will be sharing on this medium, and I will be getting a confirmation. John Eva Anthony Pena. The person is there. John Eva Anthony Pena. Congratulations, sir. You're cool, nandito ka. But I will need to have confirmation in ten seconds. Eight, seven. We have ten seconds. Six, five, four. Are you here? I felt thousand pesos to our two. One. Team, can you confirm if he is here or not? No, no. Wow, that's a five thousand. Oh, here he is here. I almost went ahead and asked the people to pick another name, but thank God that he is here. So congratulations to our winner. It's been confirmed. Congratulations to you, John. As we mentioned earlier, you do get a wonderful prize. Congratulations once again, John. Wow, what a close call that will be. We'll be reaching out to you on the details on how to claim your prize. Now, before we end the day, we of course would like to remind everybody here to of course show their support for the better chicken option just head over to our website thebetterchickenoption.com to learn more about it and do follow pause on their social media platforms to get the latest updates about the campaign we highly encourage you to, to please hit that share button on facebook so that more people will learn about the importance of chicken welfare help us spread the word and help others choose the better chicken option Thank you so much for being with us today, for joining us. My name is Patricia Bermuda Cezanne. I urge you guys to please stay safe and remember, ox na ox, kung check na check ang chicken. Choose the better chicken option.